So welcome to unit nine, developmental psychology, and this is module 50, peers, sorry, parents, peers, and early experiences. And these slides are aligned with Meyer psychology for the AP course third edition. And these slides actually go right along with the text. Um, so welcome if this is the first time you're listening to this channel. This module is actually a pretty short one, I promise. Some of these in this, <laughs> in this unit have been very long, but module 50 only has two learning targets. Describe how our early experiences can modify the brain and discuss the ways in which parents and peers shape children's development. So how do early experiences modify the brain? What do we know from research? Well, Dr. Mark, Mark Rosenzweig and David Creech and their colleagues conducted research to conduct the impacts of early experiences on neuro, neural development in the brain. The researchers raised rats either alone in an environment without playthings or other or with other rats in an environment sort of like a rat playground, very enriched environment with lots of fun things to do, lots of playthings that change daily. So the rats in the impoverished environment that didn't have any, they didn't meet other rats with them and they had no plaything, saw impoverished brain growth as evidenced by brain weight in the growth of synapses. You can see the image on the right. So after 60 days in the enriched environment, you can see the difference of those environments, that's just not fair. The rats' brains weights increased seven to 10% in the number of synapses mushroomed by about 20%. The enriched environment literally increased brain power according to this research. So pretty powerful evidence from this animal, these animal models. How does practice increase neural development? So for example, string musicians who start playing before age 12 have larger and more complex neural circuits controlling the note making left hand fingers than do string musicians who start later. So that's some evidence for the fact that practice matters and changes um, in neural circuitry. What are the applications of these research findings? So the results that from these, that the studies that I just mentioned and many others have motivated improvements in environments for lab, farm and zoo animals and especially for children in institutions. You know, a lot of the research that has come out um, has, has shown the importance of having an enriched environment for um, infants and young children, especially in uh, different types of institutions. So can touch and stimulation increase cognitive development? Simulation by touch or massage also benefits infant rats and premature babies. Handled infants of both species develop faster neurologically. So getting love um, and getting a baby massage, it helps, it helps babies develop faster neurologically and to gain weight more rapidly. Preemies who have had skin-to-skin -skin contact with their mothers sleep better, experience less stress, and show better cognitive development 10 years later. Pretty powerful research. So how does experience change the brain? Due to the brain's amazing plasticity, if you remember we talked about that back in our biological basis of behavior uh, unit, neural tissue changes and reorganizes in response to new experiences. New neurons are also born. If a monkey pushes a lever with the same finger many times a day, brain tissue controlling that finger will change to reflect that experience. The environment will actually um, change the brain. What does the research indicate? Shared environmental influences from the womb onward actually don't account for that much um, differences um, in, in children, in children's differences. Uh, Robert Plowman is a foremost uh, behavioral geneticist. He and Denise Williams said two children in the same family are, apart from their shared genes, as different from one another as are pairs of children selected randomly from the population. The, the underlying genetics and the unshared um, environmental influence are the things that have the most effect on children's development. So developmental psychologist Sandra Scar believes parents should be given less credit for kids who turn out great and blamed less for kids who don't. So it's interesting, culturally, um, in, in the United States, we often immediately place blame for 
uh, children's behaviors or misbehaviors on parents. And there's a lot of information out there. Or on the flip side, we, um, when people have highly successful children, we give them lots and lots of credit. And probably some of it's due, but there's, there are other factors at play. You know, there's a lot of influence from underlying genetics and unshared environmental influence. So cultural differences in parenting expectations. So you can see Amy, Amy um, Chua, the law professor and author of Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name actually. She, I actually read, read that book um, and she talks a lot about what she calls tiger parenting and uh, differences between Asian Americans and European Americans. There are often differences in parenting expectations with Asian Americans um, mothers may be pushing children to do well, um, but that might actually strain the relationship. There's some researchers that have, have looked into that. Um, it's a very interesting book about uh, different approaches to parenting. And I, I will say with the, in the Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother, the, the author talks a lot about the positive effects and outcomes for her two daughters. So how do childhood peers nurture impact our behavior? Preschoolers who disdain a certain food often will eat that food if put at a table with a group of children who like that. Notice it says often. I happen to have two kids, but that didn't happen with. <laughs> children who hear English spoken with one accent at home and another in the neighborhood at school will likely adopt the accent of their peers, not their parents. Teens who start smoking typically have friends who model smoking suggest its pleasures and often offer cigarettes. So peers can have a really large influence on behavior. And that can be really problematic in some cases, right? Depending on the group of peers. So peer power. As we develop, we play, date, and partner with peers. No wonder children and youth are so sensitive and responsive to peer influence. Peer influence does seem to have a large effect on development. So how can parents influence the peer relationship? The power to select the neighborhood. Not everyone has that power, of course. Um, power to select the neighborhood, schools, you know, what kind of educational environment in general gives parents the ability to influence the, cult, the culture that can shape the child's peer group because we know that the peer influence really matters. Um, because neighborhood influences matter, parents may want to become more involved in intervention programs that are aimed at the whole school or the neighborhood. See, I told you it was a short module. We are already to the learning targets. So the first one was describe how early experiences can modify the brain. As a child's brain develops, neural connections grow more numerous and complex. Experiences then trigger a pruning product, process. Unused connections are weakened and heavily used connections are strengthened. Early childhood is an important period. Very, 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 very important period for shaping the brain. But thanks to plasticity, the brain is able to modify itself throughout our lives in response to learning. So the second learning target was discuss the ways in which parents and peers shape children's development. Family environment and parental expectations can affect children's motivation and future success. Personality, however, is mostly not attributable to the effects of nurture. It's more attributable to the effects of nature. As children attempt to fit in with their peers, they tend to adopt their culture. Peer influence matters. Habits, accents, and slang, for example. By choosing their children's neighborhood and schools, parents are able to have an influence on that peer influence, however. Okay, thank you for listening. Take care.